Okay, hello there ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Hilly123 here and it's time for yet more Resident Evil 4 Professional difficulty let's play a walkthrough and this is chapter 3 slash 2 Hunnigan, what happened? The transmission got cut off <laughs> Salazar, how'd you... We've jacked the line We didn't want you telling everyone any unnecessary information Where's Ashley? Ah, oh, so she fell into one of our wonderful traps. We'll make sure we find her. Don't you worry about her. Oh yes, I let our miserable insects out for some exercise down in the sewer. Thanks, that should keep me company, cause boredom kills me. I look forward to our next encounter. In another life. So yeah, Salazar is talking about the Navista doors though. Agonizingly irritating enemies. But on the plus side, we've not got Ashley, so pros and cons, ladies and gentlemen. And I've got to say, one of the best things about this game overall, there's some bad ones here and there, but the boss fights are really good. And obviously, Lord Nakami and probably other geniuses at Capcom who worked on the original games left Capcom after this and you look at the boss fights in Resident Evil 5, they are mostly really bad or irritating. In this game, they are so much better. So much better. But the first Navista door is always in the distance there. But you can always see the venom spewing from the mouth. The saliva, whatever. <laughs> I think here I throw a grenade at two and then pop them from a distance. To be honest with you, after these two, you can run past a lot of them. Although sometimes you will be hit as you go past, so it's not always foolproof. But I end up fighting a lot of them and to be honest, this next part, as far as I remember, gets a little bit Lionel messy, unfortunately. One good thing about the Navista doors, though, is they drop a lot of coloured eyes, green eyes, red eyes, and whatever else coloured eyes there are. There's a shit shot. Usually, when they attack that way, you can engage in a quick time event by tapping X to stop taking damage at least. The most damaging attack is when they puke at you. And I was speaking in the last video of a particularly violent death scene with a Garador. These guys can rip your actual face off with acid. It's uh, pretty ludicrous. I'm going to reload and make my move. And I think I get damage as I go into this room here on the left. Because I hear him and I don't know where he is. One more, just around the corner, I think. And I get rid of those guys with a TMP, save a bit of shotgun ammo. He was just about to uh, spit the venom at me. Just 
just got him in time. I feel like crying every time I miss a shot with this semi-auto rifle. It's devastating, it really is. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> and then he runs off. And all of this is pretty unnecessary. I could be moving here and making progress. But in two of these cells... In one of them, I think there's like seven shotgun shells, and in another one, more importantly, there's a yellow herb. And I really like the aspect of the yellow herb because they are free upgrade items, essentially, and here they are. To max out your health naturally as you go through the game, the more you explore, the more you get rewarded. And that's the kind of shit that's missing from the newer Resident Evil games, which just it's just bizarre, really. Oh, I'm really tired, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, I had a week off work this week, and I've done nothing, because when I'm at work, I'm very busy, very stressed, so if I want to spend a week doing nothing, I'm going to spend a week doing nothing. Yeah, I'm more tired than I usually am. Ah, yes, I love this fight. <laughs> Now these guys, once you attack them, they all look to leave the room, so I like to stun them with an incendiary. Now the main zealot dude in red can escape potentially, and he has a very very valuable um, item on him, the Los Illuminados pendant, so I'm stopping him from escaping, there you go. We've got two head chompers on the scene. It's time to use a flash. Treasures though, aren't I? Don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm thinking what colour are the other green eyes? Uh, cat's eyes, I should say. But there's a purple one, but then there's another one. Is it orange? Possibly? Welcome. But coming up, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a part where one of the zealot dudes can potentially get on a gun turret, and if you let him do that, it is potentially devastating. He runs away, but he gives you a chance to catch him. Uh, it's just utterly bizarre and crazy. But let's just run with it. <laughs> it's been a long time since I allowed him to escape. And I most certainly don't let him get on the turret at this playthrough. I would have been very angry if that had happened. It's a pain in the ass, it really is. Is that all? But I'm sure everyone who played for this game for the first time. Not enough cash, stranger. Yeah, everyone who played this game for the first time, that happened to them.
Because he's obviously got a key item that we need to progress, you see. That's the thing. And here, I try and hide behind that pot. Because nine times out of ten, they break the actual pot for you and you get the loot inside. But I actually took damage. That has very rarely happened before for me. I'm not going to say it's never happened, but... It must be a long time ago since it did. Enemies are so hard and awkward to knife on this game when they're on stairs. Whee! Get shanked, brethren. realized something about this room. I think I missed the uh, sniper ammo. I mean, I'm not running that low for ammunition, but there's about five sniper rifle bullets to my left and I get the feeling that I missed them. Let's see if I did. Oh, no. Disregard that. I'm talking shit. your hand through that door. <laughs> right, he's on the run. There's always nerve wracking. But there he is waiting for us. And then I think, right, I'll do him again. And then I think to myself, here, no, I stop. And I thought about trying to shoot him before opening that door, but I just go past down here. But watch when I turn around. Look at him. If I try and get the shotgun out and hit him, it wouldn't have worked. So I shoot him again with the TMP, get some space, and then hit him with a shotgun. And it always feels satisfying to stop him. Because I can't emphasize enough how annoying that part is when he's on the gun turret. Seriously. But we got the gallery key. Which will start up a pretty intense fight. Which goes okay, I do believe. And two fellas with rocket launchers. Just as you open a the door, they're waiting for you and you shit yourself. But the door will automatically close and if you just stay where you are, you won't take damage. Puzzle 1, 2, 3, and 4. I am a puzzle genius, ladies and gentlemen. No doubt about that. Ugh. And I have been doing this now for about nearly three hours, by the way. Three hours I've been doing this. Just narrating my uh, Let's Play. What a blessing surprise. Mr. Kennedy. If you don't need me, then get off my back, old man. Woo! <gasps> Did you say old man, Mr. Kennedy? It might come as a surprise, but I'm only 20 years old. So you're just like all the others? A puppet of the parasites? Surely you don't think I'm the same as those diminutive ganados. The parasites, las plagas, are slaves to my will. I have... 
absolute control. Well, I really don't give a damn. Rain or shine, you're going down. Surprise, motherfucker. Great cutscene. So many great cutscenes in this game. So satisfying to play. A game where there's just so many different great things to say about it. But seeing Salazar there has reminded me, ladies and gentlemen, one of those two creatures next to him is called Vadugo. I can't remember. Oh, I do remember what happens to the other one. He actually becomes the boss as he fights Salazar. Great boss battle. And this absolutely mon massive monstrosity of a boss. And the other one is Vadugo, who chases you down later on in the game. And Vadugo is genuinely scurry. And I will admit to you guys, I will be getting a rocket launcher to take care of him. But I'll speak more of that when the chapter arrives. I think it's either chapter 4-2 or 4-3. Well, there's so many crossbow guys here, it's utterly ridiculous. I'm just duking them, but it's the rocket bros. I'm going to go into the wrong room first, realise my mistake, and then come back out again. As you can see, I'm being a little bit tentative. I'm just waiting to see if they're going to fire the rockets because I don't remember. But well, there they are. <laughs> well, that guy's dead. And now, so are they. There's still quite a few enemies dotted around here, but I can't be asked taking them out. We've got what we need. Done pretty well. So let's make some progress. We're nearly at the end of this chapter now. Every time I get to a new area of this game, I'm like, ah, oh, awesome, it's that part. Oh, it's this part. Oh, I remember this. So many memorable parts, ladies and gentlemen. Including one coming up, which most certainly isn't everyone's favourite. I don't dislike it that much. I know my way around it, but it's the maze <laughs> with the dogs in. And later, we'll be coming back here with Ashley because there's a free Magnum to get. And I only found out about that a couple of years ago, even though I've been playing this game since January 2006. I mean, a lot of people prefer the Broken Butterfly to the Killer 7. The Killer 7 is a Magnum, which is the most powerful Magnum in the game. I think by default it does like 25 damage, the Broken Butterfly does like 17. But if I can get a free Broken Butterfly, upgrade it a bit, and then sell it for the Killer 7, sounds good to me. Mr. Kennedy. Still alive, I see. So, do you like my garden? I see you've managed to work in a little of your twisted taste here, too. <laughs> Sagacious as I am, even I get lost here sometimes. Sagacious. Even if it takes your whole life, you'll never get out. Do you know that no one dies without a cause? You will satisfy the stomachs of my cute pets. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to tie up a few loose ends. Like chasing down a couple of rats. Couple of rats? Two rats? If one's Lewis, who's the other? Huh. They're an intruder besides me? Good Friday to my real ladies and gentlemen, just realised that. <clears throat> so all my work colleagues will be off, nice one. And my mum has bought an... Well, I say an easter egg, she's actually bought three, I don't know why. A whisper one. Um, another Cadbury's one, <coughs> I can't remember. And then a Gylian one. I've had Gylian chocolate before, I think I remember it being nice. By the way, watch this for a terrible throw. Pretty hysterical. <laughs> I'm hesitant to use my hand grenade though because I need it for a strategy coming up in the next chapter. But the shotgun is your friend with these things because nice crowd control, keep your distance from them. Because these guys can jump on you and bite you, sure. But they've also got another attack where the tentacles have come out of them. And that is a very, very damaging. We'll take at least 75% of my health away. But you just play this game and you just know and understand that Lord Makami knows how to create tension and create great gameplay dynamics and put you in scenarios where, yes, this isn't pure survival horror anymore, it's a little bit more action orientated than that, but the pacing, the atmosphere and the gameplay... <coughs> You know, it means that it's still not all out action and it's still an incredibly valuable experience. I mean, obviously, this is one of the best games ever made, but when he left, obviously, it's all about making money, it's all about pure action. It's happened to so many other great series like this. It just sucks. It just sucks, ladies and gentlemen. Because we're missing out on great game experiences because money is taking precedent. I mean. <coughs> Of course, it's always been part of the deal, but no games cost so many millions to make, it's ridiculous. I don't know. And when I'm referencing, you know, Lord McCarmy knowing how to do that, what I'm talking about in that situation are the, the dogs growling. Like, you can't see them, but you can hear them, and you're shitting yourself. But anyway, that's the end of the chapter, but not before a cutscene with Miss Wong. Put your hands where I can see them. Sorry, but following a lady's lead just isn't my style. Put them up now. That slow mo dough. Try using knives next time. Works better for close encounters. Leon. Long time no see. Ada. So it is true. True? About what? You, working with Wesker. I see you've been doing your homework. Why, Ada? What's it to you? Why are you here? Why'd you show up like this? <laughs> See you around. Ada! 